me is a little uh, thing which almost all surgeons have to face once in a while while managing their patients and uh, it, it is a little easiest procedure which is done by all the surgeons but sometime uh, the finer points are there which you have to take care and if you take care of that finer point and the post operative management then the things go fine otherwise uh, since it deals with the airway the airway compromise can hamper the patient so tracheostomy has been performed since rigveda times in 1800 it become very popular for treating diphtheria as we know the diphtheria causes the upper airway membrane especially in the tonsil and the posterior pharyngeal wall and leading to uh, the airway upper airway obstruction uh, it was first done by galen in 17th century and first documented human tracheostomy was done by bresevola uh, there are two tracheostomies earlier the high tracheostomy means that you enter high into the uh, trachea and uh, around the cricoid the first of the cricoid cartilage and uh, it is associated with high incidence of laryngeal stenosis and high mortality rate so it is not done nowadays nowadays we directly enter to trachea at the third and fourth tracheal ring and the only thing which come in be- in between is the stomas of the thyroid gland so if you have already done a thyroid tracheotomy it's not a problem but if you have not done a thyroid tracheotomy you either have to ligate it or retract it superiorly so that you get a space on the trachea so coming to the indication in head and neck surgery upper airway obstruction we talked about the diphtheria there may be some tonsillitis peritonsillar abscess so anything in the upper pharynx causes compression sometime there are uh, uh, the parapharyngeal tumors that can cause compression uh, any upper airway obstructions like infections or some malignancies which uh, uh, are there in the larynx and the hypopharynx they sometimes cause the airway obstruction and they require tracheostomy tracheal infiltration by malignancies uh, many a time even the differentiated thyroid cancers can go invade the trachea if it is uh, a minimal uh, if there are a grades 1 2 and 3 so if it is differentiated we can just save off in grade 1 in grade 2 we need to uh sacrifice the part of trachea but if the two and three tracheal rings are there we can sacrifice those rings and do intent anastomosis which is routinely done in sgpci and uh, then there may be tracheomalacia which is uh, due to the long standing sometimes the long standing comp- compression on the trachea by the thyroid gland bulky thyroid gland can lead to tracheomalacia and the patient may develop a spider in the post operative period we avoid tracheostomy but sometimes it's unnecessary having mm-hmm. laryngeal edema sometimes due to the manipulation of the tube or if the patient has been intubated for long time uh, there may be the laryngeal edema and that can impair the uh, patient airway which is rare but sometimes it's is there bilateral vocal cord palsy with impending airway obstruction especially if the cords are in the median position and uh, the patient even if has the slightest of uh, uh, exertion then he may have a strider so these kind of patient to prevent any complication we need to do tracheostomy and the indication is long term ventilation so this is as per say in head and neck surgery or in uh, the thyroid surgery uh, what does the tracheostomy do it reduces the upper airway dead space by up to 150 ml and significantly reduce efforts of breathing significantly reduce airway resistance and increase alveolar ventilation more comfortable than endotracheal tubes we all know that in the conscious patient can tolerate tracheostomy very well potential to eat and talk with the tube in c2 which is important for the quality of life uh but there are inherent problem with the tracheostomy warming humidification and filtration of air which usually happen by the nasal passages and the uh, air when it passes through the pharynx and larynx does not happen there is increased production of mucus in response to the foreign body because tracheostomy is a tracheostomy tube is a foreign body normal mucus ready mechanism is disrupted which well, all the cuff and secretion is uh, first went to the larynx and then goes out from the throat or it can so be swallowed uh, metaplastic change in ciliatic epithelium to esquamous epithelium we know that trachea has uh, cilia 
and, and they always beat all the time to cuff out the secretions from the airway into the throat but that is hampered and there is uh, ascomas epithelium grelisons happening there in the tracheal sphincter there is normal uh, disruption of normal swallowing mechanism also because it hamper with the movement of larynx the loss of ability to close the bracket and produce a intraryngeal pressure less effective cuff is there there may be the retention of secretion if the cuff reflex is not good within the bronchial tube so coming to with this physiology in mind we come to the tubes so the ideal tracheostomy tube is to be rigid enough maintain an airway the airway should not collapse but it has to be flexible to limit its damage and maximize patient comfort uh, it could be neonatal pediatric or adult it could be cuffed and cuffed we shall come to come come to this so this is a normal cuff tracheostomy tube with the cuff is there flanges is there this is a tube and this is a opening where the oxygen and ventilator can be connected and there and there is a cup then there are the fenestrated tubes and there are outer and inner cannulas so this uh, in this uh, tube we can have the inner cannulas and this is the introducer uh, which is in uh, there so we'll come to the so this is the types of tube so this is a tube you can see that this is a normal tube which we use most of the time but if there is a secretion so we can put a suction channel the tube comes with the suction channel on itself and you can connect a suction there is a continuous suction on this area or you can just connect the suction no need to do suctioning through the so then there are silicon tube if you want to keep the tracheostomy for the longer time you can use the silicon tube there are the metallic tubes so metallic tubes are used when uh, like the patient is on long term tracheostomy and there is no uh, because they are easy to maintain they have also have outer and inner tube and that can be cleaned very easily under a tap water and this is the introduction the tracheostomy tube sizes you know that uh, it comes uh, from the smaller size 2 to the uh, almost 10 uh, but uh, here you have to multiply the for this this comes in uh, different sizes so you have to multiply this tube with 4 to get a appropriate metallic so if it is a 7 tube then you have to get a 28 uh, number tube then they are cuffed and uncuffed especially for the children you use uncuffed and when the patient do not have only airway issues and no uh, as chances of aspiration you can use a uncuffed tube then there is tube with fenestra this is very very important a fenestrated cuff allow the air to leak although it's doing a function so if, if the person has near normal vocal cord he can speak with a fenestrated tube even in this normal tube you can make a fenestra here at the highest point of the curvature and can make this like a fenestrated tube Uh, this tube cost twice the cost but we we try to make this tube only the fenestrated tube and uh, nothing happens to the cuff so this is very important in the patient is uh, want to phonate um, so this fenestrated tube uh, available uh, the commercially also with and without the cuff uh, cut fenestrated tube is useful when a stable patient is weaning from the tracheostomy and require both period of cuff inflation and deflation and a speaking valve contraindication is the use of patient requiring positive pressure ventilation because then the airway leakage will be there i will come to the later then we have neonatal and pediatric tube which are smaller in size and uh, uh, the important point when we do it in neonates is that the tracheostomy tube lower end does not should touch the carina then there are armored tube so the armor tube help in uh, any collapse of the airway if it is a, and uh, uh, this does not prevent uh, even the compression if the compression if you are putting it for the palliative care like in, in a plastic carcinoma we can put this type of tube that uh, even if the compression of the mass is there the airway will not collapse so these tubes are very very helpful uh, then extra long and visible flanges tube is uh, important because sometime the patient is very obese like 120 kg patient you are doing a tracheostomy so that this area this area had come handy because of the skin soft tissue and also the trachea dips very sharply in a narrow neck patient so you can use uh, uh, this from here or you can use from here so you can do a stable flanges can be just with this is two here and this is very very this also come as armored and non armored so this is very very usefully used it uh, once or twice a year in sgpgi for very obese patients uh, 
then cuffed and uncuffed, uh, you have to understand that in a uh, uncuffed tube, uh, the ventilation is possible. So it is important that uh, uh, the aspiration can also be there from the upside and there can be, uh, patient can have airway blast. So it is useful when you are using the speech system, but if it's kind of a tube. Uh, coming to the size, uh, the size is the inner diameter is age upon four plus four mm. Uh, based on the weight also, the formula is, uh, important, but uh, recommended that the external diameter of the tracheostomy tube should not be more than two third or three quarters of the tracheal lumen. You have to not snugly fit in the tracheal lumen because there will be the pressure necrosis of the small blood vessels there. So it is important that the tracheostomy should be adequately uh, in size, but not very long. So usually in our uh, practice, we use six and a half or seven tube for the females. And for the males, we go a little longer, seven, seven and a half, and sometimes eight, depending upon the uh, patient. Also, we can use uh, uh, the index finger of the patient to have a normal understanding. Uh, depth of the tissue between the skin and trachea, which affect the required length. I will talk to you about the long tracheostomy tube. So it is important that we have to take this in the consideration because if the tube is shorter, it will not go into the tracheal lumen. Even if it is going to tracheal lumen, there is a high chances of dislodgement. So this is important for the size. Uh, tips on surgery for better care, uh, you have to localize the trachea well and make the tracheostomy in the center of the trachea, not on the lateral side. I have seen many a time the tracheostomy is done on the lateral side and that uh, the tube is, will be there in the air but it will be positional and there is a high chances of dislodgement. Then while inserting the tube, it is important the position we insert. Conformation of tube in C2 is very, very important. If the patient is, is breathing, you can take the blast or you can put a wisp of cotton on the tracheostomy side. And if the patient is ventilated, either you can do bag mask and auscultate the chest bilateral for the bilateral air entry. And also you can do uh, the uh, ETCO2 monitoring, which is almost uh, uh, confirmatory of the tube in situ. Then the fixation of tube and the size of the skin incision, I will come to that. So when you are uh, opening the trachea, you have to confirm that the trachea is there. Sometimes if the rice tube is there the, uh, and a trachea is disclosed to one side, you have, might have confusion. So if the, you are not able to find the trachea, you can just aspirate the trachea and you'll find the air into it. So you confirm the trachea before putting the tube. Also, uh, there is a method to fix the tube. So when the threads are fixed, uh, you make a loop of the thread and then make it like this. You do not tie it. If you tie it, there is chances of uh, getting it loose. This tie does not get loose. So this is important that you uh, make a tie. Even when you change the tube, you have to keep all this tie and everything ready when you are changing the tube. Then putting the tracheostomy, this is the head and this is the uh, uh, foot end of the patient. So you have to come uh, literally horizontal. And then when you are into the trachea, you make it vertical. So this is important while you are changing the tube or while you are inserting it for the first time. Uh, also trachea when incision is made, you can make a, a, a horizontal incision or you can make a flap uh, or the best is that you make a crisscross incision like this. And uh, this is very good because you do not have to remove any trachea and the crisscross incision itself prevent dislodgement of the tube. So you can either make it like a cross or you can make it a crisscross or you can make it a flap also like this, the, which is called the jog flap. And you can make a flap and you can suture it. So it's it, it make a good tracheostomy opening and tube change is everything is very easy. Uh, then trachea tube securement, I will talk to you that how you tie it and then you secure it. And you always put a finger uh, to, so, to see that if there is not too tight because if you will make too tight then the IJV may be compressed and there may be engorgement of the vein and if it is too light then it may have the chances of dislodgement like in this patient uh, the uh, the patient is in anesthesia so the T tube is connected uh, coming to the uh, uh, fixation of the tube if uh, you are uh, uh, want to make sure especially in children and if long term medicine you place two switches around the tube on this and that side. 
this way the dislodgement especially with the uh, weight of the ventilatory tube because when the ventilator is in place that there is some weight on the tracheostomy at this area so to assert that you need to suture this very well so that it does not get dislodged so this is very very important and the track formation occurs only after 48 to 72 hours but it take 5 to 7 days the track uh, should be uh, to mature so the first tube change happens at 72 hours again some points on securing the tube like uh, i were told you that there is always some weight even if you put a t piece here that is uh, for the uh, small amount of oxygen it also has some weight so it may um, uh, make the tube a little displaced from this position then uh, dressing use the gauze piece and uh, it should be cut like this and you can use some uh, betadine or something uh, uh, ribbon tape uh, 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 is uh, there but then uh, suturing the skin and uh, velcro collars are easy to apply and adjust less abrasive not even confused and agitated patient so what are the instructions to the patient the work, most important thing is that whenever you are uh, tracheostomy sometime it may be done in emergency taking but at the same time one of the team person should go and take the consent of the patient which is very very important explain patient that there will be loss of voice because the first thing when the patient is trying to speak when you do after the tracheostomy the patient is conscious uh, if the patient is uh, uh, read and write it can he can be given a pen and paper for communication which is very imp important it should be kept at the bedside even if the pen come to the round the patient can explain the things explain on the duration of the patient that you are keeping it the short term to offset something and eventually you will remove it or it is for the long term because you have uh, done a laryngectomy or something like that explain how to convey difficulty in breathing because the tube blockage is the most important thing so you have to explain the patient to uh, that whenever there is a difficulty in breathing he has to communicate to the caregivers or the uh, the physicians or the nurses uh, involved in the care uh, after take a stomy avoid unnecessary intervention early recognition of deterioration and respond reduce frequency of inner cannula change and cuff pressure checks hme filter i will come to this uh, daily care is important suctioning which is very very important in initially few days then dressing i have already talked about that dressing should be done humidification hygiene hygiene is very very important along with the humidification because hand hygiene by the caregiver insect and flies many a time i see in the long term patient with tracheostomy with uh, maggots and all that so this should be prevented tube change should be taught and it should be done routinely and the follow up is also very very important if you are discharging the patient in home care uh, so, like this, a patient uh, has uh, underwent a trache uh, uh, tracheostomy for uh, infiltrative uh, CA of fibropharynx. We can see that the patient has underwent radiotherapy, but see the 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 has to be dressing has to be done. So this is the cut end, and we put a better than dressing, and we tell we teach patient that uh, it should be done on daily basis, and also the chest physical therapy is important because. Uh, it loosens the secretions from the smaller tract and can uh, come to the larger tract and then it can be suctioned or the coughed out. So these two things are very, very important. Uh, cleaning of the stoma site, sometimes at the stoma site, there may be secretions, collections, especially if the size of the stoma is big. So we try to make a smaller stoma, but uh, if there is a large stoma, you can put sutures above or below or two sutures and interactive suture so that to prevent subcutaneous impicing. And uh, dressing protect the periostoma uh, and keep you, you keep it moist. It uh, prevent any contact of the secretions with the skin and it prevent the tracheostomy to uh, pressure on the neck also. Uh, wound care, uh, uh, you have to take care like any surgical, uh, uh, I mean, thing that it's the fistula. So you have to observe for the uh, purulent discharge because if the purulent discharge is there, we need to change cultural sensitivity to see that there is a, any infection of the trachea, uh, patient experiencing any pain, if there is odor is coming, if there is abscess formation, sometimes there are small abscesses formation in and around the tube. 
cellulitis and discoloration so if the tube uh, dressing is changed daily you will be able to see all these things and if the patient relative is there and he is uh, able to see all the things uh, he can uh, then uh, alert you if it when to change the tube the first tube we change at 72 hours and thereafter it is changed weekly plenty of separations is there then you can give metal mycolytic like ambraxol or anencetyl sensitin and if the pulse is there you can send for culture sensitivity initially there will be some secretion because it's a foreign body reaction and after that the trachea settles long term uh, in the long term either daily uh, have to change the tube so we keep uh, two tubes to the patient and when the tracheostomy is measured uh, we tell patient to keep the tube into the some uh, antiseptic solution uh, uh, like uh, sevlon diluted sevlon he keep the tube which has been used yesterday clean it under uh, the uh the tap water and then put it into the uh, this uh, container containing sevlon and he can then again wash it and use it another day or there may be the outer and inner tube inner tube need to be clean under tap water so the tube change uh, is block tube or the regular change misplaced or displaced tube if there is a cuff failure then we need to change the tube if the tube is faulty or for the resuscitation you sometime need to remove and put in the tube again uh tube change is very very important especially the initially first tube tube there should be at least suited two suitably trained staff i have seen even my resident is struggling for the first tube change if uh, there is no person to help so uh, for a dedicated patient or a children a third person is needed it is recommended that one who remove the tube insert the new tube too because he knows that Uh, where is the stoma and he knows all the situation inform the patient attenders that the patient is about the procedure and including the complications the most common side effect are cough and local discomfort which is usually resolved spontaneously uh, elective tube during the time of the day when the necessary is established the uh, uh, senior staff or the other uh, routine staff is available always thin the tube in the morning the patient should be clinically stable so as to survive the period of deflation and absent ventilatory support if the patient is in icu then the change require few second the patient be able to tolerate that that uh, ventilation or you prior ventilate a little more with the uh, pure oxygen uh you can also keep the patient 3 to 4 hour npo if there is a chances of aspirations and also uh, if the neck is extended uh, the trachea become in line so the tube changes easy uh, if the patient is anxious then we can put uh, local anesthetic either through the throat or through the tube also 4% or 10% uh, spray uh, and uh, well you are changing the tube to me so you can change it over the rail roading so there's a cat and there's a, a, a you can use a small catheter suction catheter or any silicone device and then remove the tube and then put the tube de thread the tube over it uh, very easily and this is a tracheal dilator which, which is useful when the stoma is very small and in the early settings this should be there in the ward uh, pediatric tube change is a very very important although you might not be uh, dealing with the pediatric patient much but uh, this is important that in the pediatric patient the the opening is very very small so what we do we take two sutures and uh, from the both side of the stoma and then uh, keep it on the side and then while removing the tube you pull it and then remove the tube and put it there so this is also important in pediatric then humidification is very very important because the nose ectas humidifier the throat ectas a humidifier uh, but uh, it is not there and uh, humidification can either lead to heat gain or heat loss or uh, can impair the pulmonary function and the dryness can cause the tube to get blocked with the dry secretion which are difficult to remove so we can do a heat moisture exchanger hme filter which is uh, easily available in every or and uh, it retains some moisture and does not leak loss and also is it has a filter so uh, this can be done or uh, uh, but it cannot be done in patient who have uh, lungs uh, want a ventilation or there are secretions is more and it is operated by water and secretions uh, 
this is very very good if the patient is on long term tracheostomy or if you are sending home then a bib tracheostomy bibs are available so there are very minor minor ports through which the patient can easily and this can kept be wet or we can use a wet gauze piece spread it out evenly and the single layer is very good enough for the humidification especially in the hot and humid weather this is very very important and this uh, bib is very very cheap it comes and patient can make themselves with a small cotton cloth and can cover it and make the good hygiene even the cup uh, it can observe the cup it has a capacity to observe the secretions also and fluid intake is very very important uh, especially in the summer months and uh, we can also instill saline inside to make it humid if there is a lot of secretions and if it is the dry secretions we can mix one part of uh, soda bicarb with saline and then after the few second we can do suction to make the things uh, to very clean uh, nebulization is also a effective way especially for the airway uh, and it also helps out with humidification but uh, it is not substitute to the humidification uh, coming to the suctioning this is very very important because many a time the sisters is not very well accustomed so you can see that the suction and there is a rotation i will just uh, play a video and uh, how to do suctioning so this is very very important so you take the suction put it inside and once it goes inside you uh, uh, the patient start coughing that which is in the lung and then you take it out and rotate it okay. so the rotation of the uh, suctioning tube is very very important when you go in like this so that you are able to uh, touch all the parts of the tube so this is very very important and then uh, uh, patient uh, how we know that the suctioning need to be done actually it should be done at least every 4 hourly but if there is abnormal breath sound irregular respiratory pattern change in secretion like thick secretions a lot of secretions there is increase in coughing patient is coughing then it requires suction and if there is change in skin color if you think the saturation is falling down that may be tube blockage the patient appear anxious he is not able to communicate then the patient face is a good indicator that the patient require suctioning uh coming to the suctioning in the ward we have a central suction like this but uh, uh, if the suction is suction you know this suction the should be available and this is a, a pet, uh, electric suction and there is also a pedal suction is available so when we send patient home we we train them for at least 4 to 5 days on a pedal suction uh, because the sometimes the electricity problem in rural areas not in the urban area so we have to not rely on this we the pedal suction is very very good and it come cheaper in 2000 rupees only uh choosing a catheter for the suction we know that the color code the important point is that it should not cover half more than half so uh, this is a rough guide that if you are using a 7 mm then you have to use the 12 french catheter there is a formula that you divide uh, you can and read about it but uh, i think uh, uh, that uh, that's a little detail uh, the other important point is that if you have a inner uh, tube you can uh, morning and evening uh, remove it and clean it under the tap water and there is a brushes are available which you can clean or even if you do not have a tube with inner cannula you can use two tubes put one day and then clean it another way while keeping it keep it in some antiseptic solution i told in the sevlon uh, complications of tracheostomy can happen intra or post operative early rate and long term complications are there so i will talk about the complication tube block is one of the important complication so tube may be due block due to the secretion so we always tell patient to get a tube change third day under the supervision of a surgeon or on the seventh day or even a nursing staff can change the tube if it is trained uh, well uh, tube may be blocked with the secretions or infected secretions or the tenacious secretions or it may block with the blood this is more scenario in early 72 hours and this is it happens usually later when the tube is there for the longer time so you have to take care in these cases the suctioning does not help and tube removal and reinsertion is very very helpful uh, because uh, uh, the cleaning will make it partially open and then again some secretions will block it so these need tube change
देन हैमरेज एयर वे फायर इंजरी टू ट्रेकियल अरेंज पैर ट्रेकियल एयर इम्बोलिज्म एंड एपनिया सो इट इज इम्पोर्टेंट दैट दिस एपनिया इज टेकन केयर एंड द कार्डिय अरेस्ट बिकॉज समटाइम इफ देर इज एस्पेसली सी ओ टू रिटेंशन एंड द in the brain there is a stimulation by the carbon dioxide as we put uh, tracheostomy tube the, there is a co2 wash out and the oxygen is there so there may patient go into apnea so you have to ready with the uh, cardiac arrest um, sorry the cardiac arrest may happen so you have to be ready with the cpr and all that uh, the yes. one important thing is subcutaneous emphysema pneumothorax and pneumoadenoma so what we advise that always after the tracheostomy a chest x ray should be done check chest x ray we call call it and uh, it is important to be done so it is important that you do it if there is a tube blockage you have to uh, remove the tube or uh, reinsert or clean it wound infection i have already talked about uh, if there is an infection in and around you have to give the culture direct antibiotic tracheal necrosis is very rare secondary hemorrhage is very very important in our practice it is Uh, less common but it can happen it can happen from inside the trachea it can happen in and around especially the tracheal nominate fistula can happen and tracheal nominate fistula is very very dangerous because uh, uh, it may cause uh, hemorrhage but it always come with the sentinel bleeds uh, and it is a catastrophic event uh, we were not able to save two patient third patient we were able to detect it and we took the patient and we repaired the nominate artery the patient was fine for 5 7 days but it treated again uh, there may be some swallowing issues or it probably that there is a movement of larynx is happening in late post operative hemorrhage uh, is common especially due to infection or there may be some uh, erosion by the end of the tube on the walls of trachea there may be sometime the denation formation which itself bleed tracheoesophageal fistula is a important treated com- complications which can happen if the uh, eye pressure is there and we have to identify it so what we can do to identify is that we give any liquid or any food we color it with the coloring uh, agent uh, like uh, there are food colors so we can give green green color to the patient to uh, drink if that color is coming to the tracheostomy tube or to the secretions we can easily identify that this is a uh, tracheoesophageal fistula and we need to repair it Uh, surgically or we can manage it conservatively with a small fistula we have to assess it with the bronchoscopy difficult decannulation can happen due to the denation formation or the dependency of the patient on the tracheostomy tube so there uh, we try various ways which i will come tracheocutaneous fistula uh, it happens when we decannulate i will come to it laryngotracheal stenosis is important Uh, if that is there then uh, we need to deal either with a laser or balloon dilatation or if it is a long duration we need to uh, do the tracheal resection and uh, repair primary closure tracheostomy scar is uh, complication you can say so i want to talk about the immediate and early complications uh, here the glenation tissue in trachea or at the stomach types are very very important uh, you can uh, use a uh, 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 endobronchial cleaning of this glenation tissue you can use steroid to clean this tissue this is very very important because if the glenation tissue is there long term it can lead to the tracheal or stenosis and also the glenation tissue sometime uh, uh, come around the trachea and uh, a tracheostomy tube and can have you can have difficulty in repair in, in removal of the tube uh hemorrhage i have already talked about uh apnea i have already talked about uh then listen for me so i was talking about the glenation formation it can happen around the tracheostomy tube so we can use gca to uh, clean it but if it is inside the trachea sorry if it is inside the trachea then we need to go into bronchial and then uh, clean it uh, uh, so it is important if the sometime the patient may have allergy to the silicone or the cortex tube then Uh, pvc cortex tube then we may use the silicon which is less uh, uh, important and endobrachial we do ca2 laser by a bronchoscope tracheal so we have already talked about tracheal cutaneous fistula sometime when you decannulate the tube patient there may be a small fistula so it just requires skin closure 
I don't need to worry about tracheostomy. A scar can be revised very well. Uh, coming to the uh, the other uh, thing is the speech ball. So speech is important aspect of communication. And a stated we already talked about speech ball, or there may be TEP device or electrodynamics. If it, this is for the permanent tracheostomy, when you do have the uh, laryngectomy. I will just have a word about the speech wall. So there, there is a tube uh, which is fit over the uh, stoma, like a stomy tube. But uh, there is a one-way wall. So the uh, the air can come out of it, but uh, sorry, air can go in, but uh, come out in the only. Uh, uh, so this is important that it does not hamper the ventilation, but uh, uh, the outlet of air is directed towards the vocal cord so the patient can speak and this speaking valve is very very good when you are discharging patient and you know that in few days you will be able to decannulate the patient but the only problem is that there is a lot of secretion this gate blocked so you have to uh, see the things uh, swallowing a patient can be taught uh, swallowing uh, therapy a swallowing therapist can tell ways to uh, uh, to uh, go ahead uh, to have a normal swallowing for all uh, liquid and uh, solid. Also, if there is a one side uh, paralysis, even then the patient can be taught man different maneuvers or laryngeal uh, uh, press pressure can be given so that the patient is able to do well. Uh, coming to the last point, decannulation. We can do other stage or immediate decannulation. Stage decannulation, we decrease the tube. From seven, we put six number tube. Then you put an uncoffed tube and then after five and then we can remove. Or we can do immediate decannulation. We know that it was done for some emergency and that after three, four days when the, uh, we nine to remove the tube, we can directly go ahead and remove the tube. Uh, decannulation predicts are normal functioning larynx. No evidence of aspiration, which is very, very important. No granulation or tracheal stenosis. So how can we find out either we do a bronchoscopy or we can see through the stoma. I will tell you that how to see through the stoma itself. Ability to tolerate tube closer. We can close the tube for six hours, four hours, six hours, 12 hours overnight, and then you can remove. And facility for observation is very, very important. Sometimes the patient develops distress six to eight hours or 12 hours later. So overnight admission is uh, warranted. Uh, we, you can read papers, I will not go into this. Uh, Management of stoma after decannulation. Simple tapping with respiration of edges works well. Take five to seven days to heal. Tracheal question of fiscal need to be closed surgically. Uh, just the, you have to take a skin and subcutaneous tissue. Press in the margin and close it. Patient need follow up at least one week and then after one month to see the healing as well. So you can see that this is a stoma. So we have 4 mm endoscope. Uh, we put through it and we can see from below uh, and above, we can see the status of lower brow tracheal bronchial tree, the upper bronchial tree, and through the laryngoscopy, we can see the health of the larynx. So this is also important. You just put a, uh, keep the two edges little clo closer, and then put a gauze piece, and then do a closer, which is air leak proof. If there is air leaking, then the closer take time, and the recubitanis formation open. If this is not sticking, we can also use a dynaplast or something. So uh, with this, uh, I finish my presentation. If there is any questions and comments, I will be happy to answer.